Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event, yes, a webinar, <coughs> where we cover anything that may be of interest to librarians, both in Nebraska and anywhere. The show is open and free to anyone to attend. You can watch our live broadcasts here um, every Wednesday morning. Um, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that is okay. All of our sessions are recorded, and you can go to the archived Encompass Live Sessions link on our website to see all those previous recordings. Uh, once a month, usually the last Wednesday of the month, as it is this time, we do our Tech Talk with Michael Sowers. Michael is the Technology Innovation Librarian here at the Library Commission. And once a month, he has his uh, tech-based uh, episode. Uh, this month, we're doing something a little special. We, um, Michael is down in Kansas attending the Northeast Kansas Library Systems Technology and Innovation Day. And so what we are doing today is we are live broadcasting their opening keynote speech. Uh, Cynthia Dudenhofer from Central Methodist University is going to share with us uh, a bunch of web tools to make you look cool. So let's go ahead and join them for their tech day, which is just getting started. Uh, I'm Jim Mingus, a Nichols director, for any of you who don't know me. Um, welcome to the first uh, tech day on which we've had to turn people away because we had we had more people than the room would hold. So um, congratulations, and we're looking forward to um, the coming year, which is I think is going to have uh, a lot of excitement and um, and changes and new things that we're working on. And one of the new things is uh, a number of of new staff at Knuckles. And so what I thought I would do first of all is have all the NECA staff come up so we could say who we are and, um, and, and what we do. And I particularly will mention the, uh, the, 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 the new kids on the block. And I'll just introduce everybody, and, and they can say anything you want to about, uh, about who they are. And my friend, you would just come up to the mic, but don't you? And, and first, Robin Hastings, who's our new uh, director of, te of technology. Um, as long as y'all don't hold it against me, I'm from Missouri. I've been here for five months now. <laughs> I figured I was going to get that reaction. Sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying uh, Kansas and, and Kansans, and I'm looking forward to working with y'all. Ryan, why don't you step up? Ryan, Ryan Sykes is our director, uh, is our uh, uh, systems administrator. We changed, we changed the titles. <laughs> I'm Ryan Sykes, and I'm also from Missouri. I'm a systems administrator, and uh, lately I've been working a lot with Kansas Libraries on the web, and I'm very interested to meet as many people as I can in here today. I think it's a good sign that people are leaving Missouri. There's obviously, <laughs> some, there's obviously something going on. And I'm going to have Patty come up, who is, of course, not really new, but, she, but she's new again to us. Yeah. Patty Poe, back from New Mexico, very happy to be back in Kansas. I'm Heather Brom. I know almost all of you in the room, but if I don't know you, try to find me today so I can meet you, because I do see a lot of new faces, and I'm really excited to see that. I'm the Technical Services Digital Librarian. I'm Dan Alexander, Technology Coordinator, and I'm from Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Terry Nelson, and if I'm some, there's a problem with your registration or something's misspelled on the agenda, that's probably my fault. <laughs> I'm uh, here if you have any problems with temperature or anything like that, I'm the person to talk to. Housekeeping person. And I'm Carolyn Little. I'll disappear here shortly to take calls from other folks that are concerned about the courier system today. <laughs> uh, maybe not as many problems today as yesterday when there was eight inches of snow in Goodland. Um, I'm glad you're all here. This agenda looks great. I think it'll be a wonderful day. I was the gatekeeper. Um, I'm Laura Devon. I'm called the Director of Administrative Services. It means I'm the financial person at Nichols. I do their payroll once a month, so they like me really well once a month. Um, if you have any questions on finance or budget or you need a refund or you <laughs> need to pay your bill, give me a call. Um, I don't think there's anything going on. I Full house. Glad you're all here. <laughs> 
Okay, I'm going to turn this uh, back over to Patty in her capacity as continuing education consultant yeah. to take it from here. Okay. I don't think we've ever had this many people for Tech Day, and so you will have to sit on the front row because every seat is spoken for today. If there's an empty one, trust me, it will probably get filled <laughs> a little bit. How many of you is this your first Tech Day? All right, that is great. How many of you, is there anybody who's been to all of them? Paula, all right, from Atchison. Okay, that's pretty awesome. We have a great, actually just a really great schedule. Just so you know, this first session is also being broadcast to Nebraska. So that's the, all the little tools down the side of the slide here. That's Michael Sowers, who's with the Nebraska Library Commission. And he's also recording some of the sessions for us today so we can share them with other folks who weren't able to be here. And I also want to point out Meredith from Johnson County. Stand up. She brought the 3D printer from Johnson County, which is, yay, <laughs> thank you. She's, it's working away in the edge. The edge is just down the hall at the end. It's the teen zone. It's a secure area, so we've left the 3D printer in there. Topeka has graciously shared one of their new Mondo pads, so it's in there on display. When we have a break, when we have lunch, we have a longer break this afternoon. Anytime you want to, catch somebody from Topeka Public and get into that room. Um, we will have it open during those break times, but if you need to get in some other time and just check it out, let us know. We'll, we'll get you in there. Um, i trying to think what else. Bathrooms, if you don't know where all the restrooms are, there's restrooms right outside here in the hallway. There's also some as you go into the library, across from the children's area. You probably won't miss them as you go towards uh, all the that side of the library reference. Um, trying to think what else. Lunch, we will actually have two lunch lines. So when we get to that point, I will kind of give you some heads up about where you can go to, to get your lunch. Um, as Terry said, if, if, if there's any problems, let us know. We'll try and take care of it. And I do want to thank Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library because they are wonderful to work with. They bend over backwards. They make sure that we have what we need. Um, even with the technology that we're dealing with today, they've made sure that everything is working to its best. So I really, really appreciate that they are willing to do that for us. So we will probably continue to meet here for Tech and Innovation Day just because it's a great space. Next year, they have great plans for this room, so it will be totally wired. We'll have displays down the wall, so you, if you're sitting in the back, you'll be able to see what's up here. It'll be awesome next year, but it'll be awesome today, too. Um, I'm going to introduce our first speaker, who is Cynthia Dudenhofer, and here's my little pet. She is the Director of Library and Information Resources for Central Methodist University in Missouri. What town is it? Fayette. Fayette. Fayette, Missouri. She's an Associate Professor of Computer Science and Education. She teaches courses in Instructional Technology, Social Media, and Instructional Design. She's published articles on Pinterest and um, Social Media Best Practices for Libraries, published last month by Roman and Littlefield. Um, she's a regional speaker. Uh, let's see what else. She will serve as president of the Mobius Consortium beginning in June, and she's on the Missouri Library Association Board of Directors. She's an avid crocheter, playwright, and mom, and she secretly hates cats but loves cardigans. Cynthia Dunhofer. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you guys for inviting me. I'm really excited, in spite of the fact that I live in Columbia and have to spend the night in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, I'm excited to be here. And I, have any of you guys heard me speak before? I talk really, really fast. So if I'm going way too fast, please, somebody like wave at me and say, slow down. Um, but the point of my sessions are awareness. I'm not here to teach you guys an in-depth way to use some of these tools. I want to make sure that you all can build a toolbox of free, um, non-downloadable things that everybody can access. So you have tools at the ready um, to help any kind of question that might come up at a reference desk, something at the children's desk, um, if you do instruction, all those sorts of things. So that's what we're going to focus on today and make sure everything works. I'm a little bit 
thrown off by all these microphones, so you'll have to excuse me. Okay, first, you guys, if you are sitting at a page with like a weird colored sheet, um, you have a handout of the things I'm going to go over today. I did not bring enough for everybody, I'm sorry, um, but I will put everything on SlideShare, and I was told there will be a link to the materials afterwards. So if you didn't get a handout, there will be one um, accessible after the fact. But everything I'm going to talk about today, you can just Google it. I don't even worry about putting .com or .net or .us or whatever they are anymore because we can all just Google everything, right? We're all good at Googling. Um, everything we're going to look at is free. They're all web-based. They require no downloads. Okay, That's a big thing I know at my institution and a lot of the schools and, and libraries I go to, people can't download, right? Um, you can't go to a site and download software. So we try to find things that are totally web-based. Um, many of these do have an app version. Sometimes the app version is cooler. Sometimes it's less cool. It just depends. Um, when I come to an app version, I'll let you guys know. Um, but if, it, yeah, some of them do and some of them don't. I try to stick to more web-based stuff because not everybody has a smartphone. Um, I come from a place that's full of rural, poor, first-generation college students. So we don't assume that everybody has a smartphone. Many of them are cooler if you use RSS readers, if you blog, if you tweet, if you do have a smartphone, but everything can be used without it. All you need is an internet connection. Um, and many of them are cooler if you buy the pro version, right? Everybody, when they want to give you that little taste, um, and they say, okay, for free, for whatever, you can do this, but if you'll give us four bucks a month, you can have the exciting version. Um, but everything here is free, at least to begin with. Okay. I've tried to group tools by similar functions. Um, web applications don't easily group themselves, so if the grouping seem a little nebulous, um, that's because, yeah, I was trying to group them. Um, I do talk really, really fast, so if, I, if I'm going too fast, please let me slow down. And then at the end, if you guys have any recommendations, we're going to bleed right into your next session, which is a lightning round of your all's favorite web kind of stuff. Um, so hopefully we'll sort of just have a nice little segue into the next session. I do love little cats. I do hate cats in real life, um, which is why that's on there. I hate it for a long time because no librarians and cats. Um, I have dogs. I don't have cats. But I do like little cats, so there are some in my presentation. Okay, so um, Web 2.0 is getting to be kind of an outdated term, but it's still kind of the best one I can find to group this sort of stuff together. Um, I don't know if anybody else has a better term that they like to use, but I'm still using that term. Um, for these tools, um, and for Web 2.0 in general, we try to find things that are multi-platform. Um, I don't want anything that can't work on a Mac and only works on a PC, or can only work in Firefox but not Internet Explorer. So we try to find things that can work across all platforms. You never know what people are going to come in with, right? You might have somebody that comes in with a really ancient laptop with like Internet Explorer 5, and they're trying to work things. So we try to make sure we can be as multi-platform as possible. Free, obviously, is a big deal. None of us have enough money. Um, so free is always a good thing. Our patrons don't have enough money. And so if we can find things that are free, that's always useful. Um, and actually useful. How many of you all are like, oh, I downloaded an app for my phone. It's going to be great. It's going to change my life. And then you have to like wedge it into the way you work, right? or wedge it into the way you live because you want to use it. But it's not really that useful. You know, I have a tendency to do that. I get excited by flashy toys, um, but then I, you know, don't actually use it. So I try to find things that you guys can integrate into your workflows and to your reference questions in a usable way. Um, everything here, too, some of them are apps, but most of them are cloud-based. There are, as there's a little bit of crossover, and we're sort of blurring those lines now. Um, most often, it seems like developers try to produce for both, both a cloud platform and both for apps, um, but there's still a few that are one versus one. Phones. Um, everything I've tried to find is also like in the App Store for, for Apples and on Android Market and on Google Play. Um, I don't think there's anything that I pulled out. I'm trying to remember. Um, you know, Apple's a little bit more exclusive than the other two. Sometimes they don't like to share. But most of these are prominent enough now where they're on all platforms. And then again, we don't have any downloads here unless you're downloading the app for your phone. Everything is cloud-based, so we don't have to worry about that download security restriction kind of stuff. Okay, so here we go. Okay, Facebook. I'm just joking. Like, we all know about Facebook, right? <laughs> so, I like to scare people with blocks of unbroken text, right? That's what you want to look at, like, at 9 in the morning? Okay, anyway. Ha-ha! Practical joke, Katie. 
Um, <laughs> the first things we're going to look at are, oh, I have to stay the microphone, um, our classic presentation software. We all use PowerPoint, right? I'm using it this morning to do my shame. Um, but I can't find a better way to do these kinds of links than PowerPoint, so it still gets its due. Um, but I wanted to show you guys a couple of, of non-traditional presentation softwares. Has anybody used SlideRocket? Yes, I'm going to ask that a lot. Just wave at me if you used it. Um, SlideRocket is basically like PowerPoint, right? But it's integrated into the web. Um, I'm not going to click into it because you don't you necessarily see it. But the cool thing about it is that it's integrated into YouTube and to Creative Commons licensing. So like if you want to make a PowerPoint and you want to pull photographs, it's, you know everything that you're pulling onto SlideRocket has Creative Commons licensing. So it's a really good tool to teach people how to use media and things and not violate copyright. Okay? Um, it also has some cool animation and stuff like that, but it's really just a fancy web-based PowerPoint. I just like the Creative Commons aspect to it. Well, we have an issue with that, I know, with students stealing images all the time and not thinking about it. So this is a nice tool. Prezi, everybody's probably seen a Prezi, the zooming ones. Has anybody seen a Prezi? Yes? Okay. Um, Prezi, like, I don't even, I didn't even link it because I'm so mad at it right now. Um, Prezi is a really great idea. Um, it's a zooming editor so you can animate uh, all of your slides and everything kind of zooms together. But the problem with Prezi nowadays is that they're, they're getting huge and they're not buying the capacity to keep up with their hugeness. So they freeze all the time. They block up. They'll say they're over capacity, which is not something I want in a web tool. Um, and um, they've made a whole lot of templates that basically take away the coolness of Prezi. And so when you, you shoot it out there to teach students or to teach somebody that's trying to do a presentation, they get these kind of nasty templates. So Prezi is kind of my example of a web tool gone bad. A couple of years ago, it was awesome. Now it's like, oh, we're going to just have templates. And, we're gonna and they're just not as cool as they used to be. So take a look at it if you've not seen a Prezi, um, but if you're going to use it, like, use it creatively and don't just stick your stuff into a template. So I'm just not a template person. Okay. Um, Impressor, I am going to click into, Impressor is, we'll see, I'm, I'm testing the Wi-Fi here and see how it works. Mm, there it goes. So I hope I don't mess up the GoToMeeting stuff. No? Okay. He, he's giving me a wave. Impressor is another online um, media presentation application, but it has the capability to incorporate a lot of financial stuff and a lot of analytics. Um, slide, I didn't mention that earlier, but SlideRocket does have some built-in analytics, but you have to pay for them. Um, Impressor is free, okay, and it does have a lot of built-in stuff, and let's do benefits of financing a new car. Um, and it's all open source. I actually like to find this for um, reference questions, too, if, for things like this, benefits of financing a new car. Okay. So you might have somebody come in and say, I want to buy a new car. What does it mean to finance a new car? Well, chances are Impressor will have a nice little financial guideline for you um, that you can click through if it will load, maybe. I feel like I need, like, the Jeopardy music on cue so we can... Um, oh, well, in this one, I clicked on a bad one because this one's, like, totally boring. Meh. Oh, well. There, you saw a cool little animation. Um, but basically, uh, I'm giving up on that one. Basically, what it does is it, it has a storehouse of, of pre-built presentations. When you make anything on Impressor, you can choose to make it public or private, but most of them are public. Um, and it does have a lot of very cool Excel-like things that are built into it. So if you're doing something a little more businessy, y um, Impressor is a good choice. Creza is a set of tools, um, and Creza, it's actually Creza Education. Creza is awesome for school librarians, for well, really anybody out there. Like, it's my new favorite thing. I have a five-year-old, and he thinks this is absolutely fabulous. Creza has built-in webcomic building. It has a presentation software. It's all free, four unique tools. There we go. Okay, so it has Cartoonist which is to make web comics that has a bunch of built-in little tools that you can build your own web comics. Um, and you can mix and match themes and content, and it's all freely available. The artists have all given um, um, Creative Commons for it, so you can make your own web comics. It has a basic movie editor, totally web-based. So if you don't want to download Windows Movie Maker or do anything like that, you can use Movie Editor. It's very, very simple, very kid-friendly. 
It also has an audio editor. Um, it's like a four channel audio editor. So if you record yourself and you want to add some background music, things like that, totally web based uploads. Mindomo is a mind mapping software. If we're like, I'm a mind mapper. I don't know if any of you guys are. Um, but you can start terms and you can actually like do a visual brainstorm. Okay. It also has an iPad version. Okay. Um, so it is cross platform. Um, but it's just a group of tools, again, totally free, built for teachers, um, that everybody can use it. You can get, there is educational pricing, so if you want to like buy a license for a classroom, um, you could do that. But it's free to sign up, it's free to play with any of these tools. I especially like Cartoonist, again, my five-year-old thinks it's awesome, he can pull pictures in and create his own little web comics. Really, really neat set of tools. Okay. And then the last one is Lovely Charts. And Lovely Charts is a tool to help you make your own infographics. Um, I'm a big infographics person, and I know there's kind of an infographic revolution going on right now. If we can visually present our information, um, then people glean more from it, and they can, they can understand it in a more accessible way. Um, and Lovely Charts just gives you, um, let me click on it. I'll click on it. I have time, right? We might have to go really fast at the end, but let me click on it. <laughs> I seriously am going to break the Wi-Fi in here. Like, that's my goal. There it goes. Okay. You think we draw. It's just a lovely website, too. Um, but if you need to build, again, there's a free online edition. Um, but then now, if you want to buy it, you can pay your 30 pounds a year. Uh, but you do get it for free. There is an iPad version as well. Um, it's really, really neat for making, like, flow charts. Um, let's look at the gallery really fast. It has a lot of 3D modeling capabilities. You can see there's little people. Um, for the free version, the stuff down here where there's boxes, that's more like what you can do, right? But if you want to pony it up, you're $30, and you can do really, really fancy stuff, like move little people around. But the idea behind this is that it's really, really simple to use. It's a drag and drop software. It draws these cool little lines for you. Um, you can see it looks like there's like a LAN network device cloud that someone has made. Um, those are just a few examples. But again, free version, iPad app, totally cross-platform, very nice little tool. Slideshow. I clicked the wrong thing. Sorry, guys. Okay. Next, um, our category is new media presentation. I didn't know how to categorize these things, um, so that's why um, they're under new media presentation. Um, these are all sort of audio or second layer presentations. Um, the first one is called VoiceThread, and VoiceThread is one of my favorite things ever. I logged in so you guys could see. What VoiceThread lets you do is actually record over a, a presentation or a picture or a movie or anything. Um, and so you can upload your media. Um, I just have a couple of examples I've made my education uh, technology class do before we left so you guys can see. But we uploaded a optical illusion, right? And we'll see if it'll load the media. And then we, class, uh, this is your can you hear? Um, please take a look at this optical illusion and leave a comment either using your phone or a microphone if you have access to it. Um, you do need to leave a voice comment to get Okay. Um, so how this works is you upload your media, and then you don't have to have a microphone. You can actually have it call you. It's a free call. You can talk into your phone, and it will record your voice and comment. So it's a great way if you're working on a national project or something and you need feedback from a variety of people, they can call in on their own time, they can leave you a comment, right, and then you can come and look at it at your leisure. It's free for up to 60 minutes of recording time, which I have never run out of and I've been using this in class for about four semesters now um, because most people leave a comment that's, not, that's a minute or less. But what I like about this is people will say things that they would never type out, right? Um, so you can actually get some really more honest feedback, and you can tell a lot by people's tone of voice. Um, and so it's just a, a really cool tool, and the, it's so easy to use um, because you just put your phone number in, it calls you, and it says record now, and then suddenly your comment is on the Internet. Right? Um, I just think it's a really, really neat tool and has a lot of uses. Again, free for an hour of talking time, and then after that, not so much. Okay. Um, Vokey is to make animated vocal avatars. Has anybody ever made a Vokey? 
Yeah, a couple people. Woohoo! Loki's are very fun. Um, you can record your own voice or you can use a standard voice. Um, my students love this because you can pick what accent you want. So you can, you can make yourself like a frog in a Rastafarian wig that has an Australian accent, right? Um, you can choose anything you want. <laughs> there are paid options, so if you want to like add a lot of bling to your character or something, then you can pay for a little bit more. Um, it has lesson plans right, integrated in, so how you can use your Voki. There's an educational version, so if you don't want everybody to make a login, you can make a bunch of set logins and send them out to class or to students or to whoever you want, really, you know, uh, kids at a story time. Um, and you can click on really quick, you choose your options. I thought I had an had a option on the front page here. Um, and also, yeah, the lesson plan database is awesome. But basically, we use it for introductions because you always have those awkward situations where you have to introduce yourself. And for kids, especially teenagers, um, this, giving this, this animated version is a really good icebreaker. Um, because that way they don't have to stand up themselves and like say, I'm from Salisbury and I you know, have two dogs and I do this. They can make a little animated person that does it for them. And they have a lot more fun and they feel a lot more comfortable sharing themselves in that way. It just gives them a little bit of distance, right? Um, and you can see there, there's a whole lesson plan window here. Very fun, totally free, really easy to use. Okay, um, Glogster is like Blogster, except visual information. Um, you can basically make online poster presentations. There's an educational version of this too, so, it, so you can sign up and get a bunch of logins so people don't have to sign up themselves. Um, but it's totally a visual representation information. You can embed video clips, um, you, can, you can pull in your own pictures, you can pick a bunch of different themes. Um, this is another popular one with teenagers um, because basically it's like decorating the inside of your locker only online. Um, so you can pull in and do whatever you want. Pinterest, everybody loves Pinterest, right? Who loves Pinterest? Raise your hands. All the women? <laughs> All the women love Pinterest? Yes. Um, I don't know why guys don't like Pinterest. Like are there any guys in here, will they admit it, that they like Pinterest? Okay, woohoo, there's a couple. My, um, my ed tech students told me that that Pinterest was Tumblr for old ladies. And I was like, that makes me sad. But, you know, I can see where they're coming from. Um, Pinterest, I've been doing a lot of research into how libraries use Pinterest. Most of us, and I'll show you mine, use it for new books, new videos, that sort of stuff as a visual way to, to share our collections. Um, we started using it in my um, instructional design class for you can see here we have a research portal for satire, so the students were supposed to explain satire, right? How do you explain satire? Well, if you can pull images up of The Daily Show and The Boondocks, you, it's easier to explain what satire is. Gulliver's Travels, right? There's our classic satire. Um, so this became a, a good way um, to have them be able to express themselves but not necessarily have to stand at the front of the classroom and explain what satire is, okay? Um, so we're using those, again, for research portals. Um, I also, this is my favorite one, one of my students made a food passport. Um, he got all these different pictures of different ethnic foods and then he made a little passport. And so once you tried all of these different recipes, you got a little stamp in your passport um, and you just had different versions. Of course, Pinterest is all about food, food and crafts and like wedding photos, that's what Pinterest is. Yes, but there are many, many uses for it past that. So I think it's just the, the easiest way on the web right now to group visual information, um, regardless of the stigma that it has. Um, I, I can't find a competing tool that lets you so easily group uh, images. And yes, they're fighting with their copyright issues. They're doing much better about that. They're um, giving nice little links. Sometimes it goes away. I don't know. Okay. Um, CoSketch. Let you and someone else draw on a web page at the same time. It's so cool. Um, you log in, you send people a, a link, you go to a web page, and you can draw on it, like with marker, like, you know, virtual markers. Um, I don't really know, like, why you would use it, but it's so cool. Like, why, you know, can somebody give me an example right, of how you would use it? Um, it's just really, really neat. It's like basically giving yourself an online smart board. Okay, you can send out the link. And um, you can, yeah, I guess I didn't really need to click on that. You can see an example down here of a map, right? You can draw on top of a map. So if, like, you really don't like your Google map, 
um, you could just draw on top of it. <laughs> Quick, um, how many of you guys have Android phones? Lots. Okay, how many of you guys have Android phones and then have a person you want to call but they have an iPhone? Right? Okay, so Quick lets you FaceTime um, across platforms. It's an app, basically, like FaceTime is a visual phone. It's like the Jetsons, right, where you call and you see people talking. Um, but Quick is, it's just basically that's what it is. It's an app that lets you FaceTime across platforms. I see people looking for it right now. Yay, my job is done. Um, it's just very cool. It, Quick used to be a photo, um, like editing software, and they quickly fell out of the market. They're never going to compete with Instagram and all those folks. So they've reinvented themselves as this, basically, FaceTime for Android phones. But it works really well. Um, you can record video at any time and stream it, or you can use it like FaceTime. So if you've got an Android phone and you want to Jetsons call people, download quick. Um, visually, I'm just going to mention really fast because someone's going to talk about it in the next session. Um, but visually, it's a storehouse of infographics. Here it goes. Again, I love infographics, so you'll have to excuse my constantly talking about them. Uh -oh, have I over? Okay, there we go. Okay, so it has a bunch of different, here's some pretty ones down here. Receive a complimentary infographic. Um, you can see down here at the bottom there are 32,000 of these. Most of them are stealable or you can get with credit, of course. Um, but you can download, oh, there's a Freddy Krueger one. Facts and information about Nightmare on Elm Street. Okay, endangered species. Um, my favorite one was there was like an analysis of the way that the soccer ball was passed um, during the last World Cup. Like, and it was all these like weird little swirly arrows, but somebody had actually sat down and tracked all the times that a, the soccer ball was passed. There's the cost of being Iron Man, right? All kinds of cool little bits of information. But everything on here, again, are infographics. There is um, a builder, so you can use basic templates to make your own infographics. And then, of course, if you want to get really fancy, you can pay them a little bit of money and get a really fancy version. Mm -hmm. Okay. Work stuff. Um, so we all have to work, right? We love our jobs. We're librarians, but we all have to work. Um, so I've categorized this stuff as work stuff. The first two are markup and awesome highlighter. Has anybody used these? Awesome highlighter has been around for a long time. Like, it is one of the first web tools. Um, I saw it like at computers and libraries in 2008, I think. Like it's so, it's so old. But it lets you draw on any page. You put your HTTP in there. We'll use my school's website. Okay, so you can go here. It's very cool. It's so like if you are one of those people that, that really keeps up with your profession and reads all these cool articles and you want to share them with your staff or you want to share them with your coworkers, um, you can highlight all over them and then send them a special link so they can see the parts that you think are most important. That's basically what it is. Okay. So yeah, it opens up your page within Awesome Highlighter. You can click which color you want and then you can like, I want yellow. And then you can like draw, well, now I've broken it again. I think I'm really taxing the Wi-Fi here. You can scroll down and I can say, okay, I want to highlight this stuff. Okay, so we're going to, oh, those are links. I picked a bad page because it doesn't have a lot of text. Okay, we can highlight the address. Okay, and then you can add a note if you want to. And then you, so you save that link and then you can, even, there it goes, now it's highlighting. Okay, so you can highlight whatever you want. You can add a little post note. Then you click the Done button. It gives you a URL, and you can send it out to the world. And say, look at me. I highlighted all over a web page. There's your link, um, and you can send it out to people. It's just a really neat tool because sometimes you have an article or something you want to send to people, and they only need one little bit of it. So you can highlight it and then send it out. I think it's nice. And it's also one of those tools for me when people complain about print versus electronic information. And you hear that they like to write on it, like marginalia is disappearing. I hear that sometimes from my faculty. You can still marginalia. You just have to save the link, right? You can write all over it, and then you can save the link. Um, Markup is another tool that's like that. Um, it's pretty much the same as Awesome Highlighter, except for that it starts off right at the bat. You don't have to copy your link over. But I find it less reliable. So you just have to play with the two and see which one you like best. Toodaloo and Workflowy are kind of what they sound like. 
Um, Workflowy is my favorite. Toodaloo is a little bit more hardcore, and I'm not terribly hardcore. I need my other one. There we go. Workflowy allows you to build a task list um, across platforms. You can make it on the web, you can download the app and carry it over to your whatever device you have. Um, but basically, like it lets you outline, like here's MLA, I'm working on elections. Okay, I can go back to work, I can go back to home, I can click on personal and say, okay, Archer read Christmas, Archer's my son, he has to go to swim lessons. Um, and those sorts of things. Okay, you can make little task things. And then when you're done or you want to add more, you can see that you can break it out and look at what you're working on. But it's all, it just lives in your browser. It's wherever you want to log into it. Again, you can put it on your device. Um, and this is the way I organize myself. So I just find it really helpful. It is one of those tools, though, that if you don't organize yourself like this, you might be wedging it in. So don't wedge it in. Just try it and see if it helps you out. I don't like people wedging themselves in. Um, Toodaloo, um, I have a really, um, really, really organized um, friend named Brandy Sanchez who works at Daniel Boone Regional Library. I don't know if anybody knows her, but she is one of those people that wants to be on task all the time, and she loves Toodaloo and actually brought it to my attention. And you can organize yourself in Toodaloo to the point where if you have 10 minutes between two meetings, Toodaloo will send you an alert and say, here's a task you can finish in those 10 minutes. So like, if you are, if you are hardcore, Right. This is the tool. I hear. I hear. I see lots of head shaking. Right. Like we're not. We're not there. I'm not there. Right. I'm gonna screw around for those ten minutes and look at mod cloth. Don't tell my dean. But like, if you are like that, right, it will actually organize you, giving yourself like an estimated time it would take to complete a task. You put all your tasks in there. It looks at your schedule and integrates into your calendar, and then it will say, Hey, you have two hours free. You should work on these statistics or whatever. So if you need that kind of control or you want that kind of control, this is the tool for you. Um, again, it's free. It's a really great to-do list. I'm just not that crazy. Yes, now I hear, I hear lots of hoo -hoo -hoo laughs. We all know people like that, right, though? Yeah? So you can take this one and you can give it to your boss or something and be like, hey, look what I found. Okay, I'm going to be so productive because this thing's going to remind me every 10 minutes. Um, Pocket is the new version of a tool called Read It Later. I don't know if anybody has used this, um, but Pocket integrates across platforms. It's on the web. Um, it's on app. It's on an app store for every device. But it basically lets you stick an icon um, into your browser bar. And so if you come across an article or something and you want to keep it for later, you click your Pocket button. It sticks it in your pocket, and you can come back to it at another time. It's basically a bookmarking tool. The cool thing about it, though, is it integrates as an app into your phone or your iPad or tablet, and you can, it automatically integrates into Twitter. It automatically integrates into Facebook. So if you have tweets or something that you want to come back to later, you can send those tweets to Pocket. Everything goes to Pocket, and it automatically syncs across devices. So if you're on your phone later and you said, oh, there were like three articles I saw when I was browsing, you can open those up on your phone and read them. Okay? So no matter where you pick it and no matter where you put it in your Pocket, It'll be there for you later. Um, it's the only tool, bookmarking tool, that I've found that works that well across platforms. Um, I'm one of those people that always has the best intentions of reading things later, um, so I, my pocket's always full, right? And it's just cute to say, I put it in my pocket. Um, remember the milk also suffers from that cuteness factor here. Um, remember the milk is an online to-do list task manager. What I like about this one is that you can send lists to people. So I can say, hey, husband, I have to work late. Can you pick up this stuff at the store? And it sends him a little list, and he can't ignore it because it will beep at him on his phone. Okay? Um, so if you have people like that, if you have teenagers or whatever, and you're like, hey, teenager, you can clean your room up or do this or find a part-time job, you can send them alerts, and they will constantly blink at you. Awesome. Everybody needs a tool like that, right? Okay. Zamzar is a file converter. This might be another one for the reference desk. Has anybody used Zamzar? Oh, yes. Um, Zamzar is awesome because it converts just about anything. Um, and we get this all the time. I got a Word document and I need it to be a works document. Or I have a works document and I want it to be open office. Or whatever they do. People want crazy stuff. 
Um, I don't know anybody who would back convert to work, so I use that as an example. But how fast does it usually work? It depends. It's totally web-based, so it sort of depends on your internet connection and the traffic that Zamzar is getting. Um, but I've had pretty good luck with it taking like a minute. Um, if you do big, like we've conver converted some, um, oh, the Microsoft, it's like WAV files or WMV files to MPEG files, and that took a little while um, because we were converting video. But if you're, if you're doing like PDF to Word and back and forth like that, it's super fast. So it just sort of depends on the media kind of that you're transferring back and forth. But it will do things like convert video, right? So if you're using like a Mac or a PC and you're using a proprietary format for video, you can use this to convert back and forth. It's really helpful. It's one of those that everybody should bookmark because everybody has to do that at some point in their life. Okay. And Scribd or Scribd. Um, Jasmine was talking about this last night. Are you guys familiar with Scribd? Yes? Okay. Scribd is awesome when you're like, oh my god, I have to write an implementation report. I don't even know what that is. You can go out to Scribd and see if somebody else has uploaded an implementation report and you can take it, right, and change it for yourself, okay, and then give them credit because it's Creative Commons. Um, but it's just a really nice storehouse of information. And there are lots of things, like we did a Hunger Games um, event thing at my library, and we wanted to do Hunger Games trivia. Rather than write our own Hunger Games trivia, we went to Scribd, and there were like 20 different people that had put up Hunger Games trivia. So that saved me time, and I just used someone else's, so another library's. Um, it was actually Trails Regional Library, um, had put on your game cherry up there. So if you're, before you start those kinds of time-consuming tasks, take a look because we like to share, and probably somebody's already done it. Okay. Um, customer service, Feedbackify, um, lets you build little um, instant feedback menus into your website. So if you want your patrons to give you three questions worth of feedback about your library website, you can subscribe to the like $7 a month Feedbackify. Um, they have a little pop-up that says, will you take a survey? Okay, if you guys have ProQuest tools, ProQuest tools do this terribly. Um, so don't do it as much as ProQuest tools do it. Um, but if you want to put it on your website, you can get that little bit, little bit of information very, very easily. It builds like a little baby web form, like a little baby survey monkey, um, and it just opens up when people have visited your site for X number of minutes. Okay, very nice way to get some quick feedback very cost-effective way to get some quick feedback. Text the mob and poll everywhere are those polly things. I didn't set one up because I figured most of you guys might have seen one, right, where you text in your answer and the little bar slide. They look really impressive, um, but they're very, very easy to do. Poll everywhere and text the mob basically do the same thing. Um, they're free for like 40 respondents and then after that you have to pay. Um, but it lets you embed a real-time poll into a presentation or to a page or to whatever you're doing. Very cool if you want to answer some questions. And if you're a school or, or an academic library and you don't have clickers or you don't want to mess with clickers, this is a web-based version of clickers, basically. Okay. Um, and then I truly care is one of my favorites. So I'm going to click into it. I get attached to these things, and then sometimes they go away, and I'm like, oh, I didn't make it. Um, so we've all used PayPal, right? Everybody used PayPal? I Truly Care is a non profit nice version of PayPal. And what I Truly Care lets you do is you can set up zero fee donations. So if you have a project and you want people to donate money to you and you don't want to pay PayPal's crappy fees, you can use I Truly Care. Okay? And, they get, and you can see 0% fee donations, and it's totally true. Okay? They do not take any off the top if you can prove that it's a charity event and that it's, it's a nonprofit organization. Um, you can do ticket sales, you can do registration, um, you can take money for all different kinds of things. They just have really, really low overhead compared to PayPal. Um, but they also take credit cards and do all that kinds of stuff. They also have, you can see it has a promote and interact little button here. Um, they have a lot of tools built in so you can sort of promote this out through social media. Um, so I think it's just a really nice tool for libraries because I get really tired of paying for PayPal fees. Um, our state association is dealing with this right now. Ooh, I clicked something naughty. It tried to filter me out. Um, and so this way you can kind of get around some of those fees, right, with I Truly Care. Okay. Um, I'm not a children's librarian. I do have a five-year-old. 
Um, but so I pulled out some stuff that we use in my educational classes um, that I think would be really great for kids. Does anybody get my reference, you know, for kids? Like, I will love you. What's it from? Yes! Yay! You guys made my day. It's from Hedzerger Proxy, which is one of my favorite movies. If you haven't seen it, go ahead and see it. Okay. Hedzerger Proxy. So the first one is called Handy Points. Anybody use this? If you have a small child, this is an essential place for you to go. It's printable worksheets and activities. Yeah, everybody's like, yes, right? Okay, so you can print out chores. You can do, there's paper dolls. There's all, it's not going to display them. Look at all those X's. Um, there's math. The chore charts are what I really like. Like you can get like little star sheets. There's lots of arts and crafts. Um, there's lots of basic learning things. And if you do, you can see there's 10,000 printables. There's a parenting blog on how to use some of this stuff. Um, and if your kids are into that, the more they do, if they do the online versions, they earn little points, right? So they can um, use their little star points to buy stuff in the virtual store, which is like stickers for my virtual cat. But if you're five, that's pretty cool, right? Okay. Um, but I think this is just so useful. So if you have a very stressed out parent at the children's desk that says, I don't know what to do. My five-year-old will do this and say, ha ha, let's print out a chore chart for them. And then they'll hate you. But they might learn something. Okay. Um, Storybird. Storybird is super cool. It's a storytelling tool. And you can see it's a Storybird, Storybird for schools. Um, and what this does is it gives you images. It's a bunch of, again, sort of Creative Commons art. Okay, um, and it lets you build uh, stories, and you can, and you can see it has little reinforcement tools, um, and you can do fundraisers, but mostly it's, it's basically a story building tool. But the cool thing about it is, is it has a link, so you can play like Story Go Round with it. Has anybody played Story Go Round? So I can say, oh, the castle ran, or the knight ran up to the castle, and he saw the dragon, and he pulled at his sword, and, and then you get a link, and you can send it off to somebody else, or you can save it on the web, and then the next person can add their bit to the story. Okay. And then you can go to the Creative Commons art, and you can pull out images, or the, whoever is using the tool can pull images to illustrate their story. Um, it's totally free, and if you are an artist and you want to get some exposure for your art, you can also share art on this site. Um, it's just a fun little thing to do. Little Bird Tales is illustrating your own audio storybook. It's cute. Okay. You make an account. You do have to have a microphone. They're working on an app version of this, which will not require it. But if you want to record your voice or a child's voice, you do have to have a microphone. But they are like, you know, $4 from Walmart now. They're really inexpensive. Um, but what it lets you do, you can draw or upload your artwork to each page. Then you record your voice, and then you have a nice little web-based audio storybook. I thought they had an example one down here at the bottom. Um, we did this with um, my, the people I was teaching to be teachers, and we had an early literacy class where we had kids come in, and it was just so much fun because the kids really enjoyed hearing themselves, right, and being able to draw their own pictures for their stories. Um, there are sometimes do, there sometimes are naughty ones on here, though, because there's no, like, you know, blocker. Um, so if you are opening it up, I made this mistake, um, if you're opening up in front of a classroom, you might like pick one in advance, um, so you don't open up a naughty one. So here we can say, I'm not even going to tell you what it was. Okay, so you can see we have twinning, obviously some child has drawn this picture of a chick. Okay, you guys can't really hear it, can you? Yeah. Okay. So basically, yeah, it has a little audiobook and they've recorded their voices. Very fun, totally free. Um, really cool. Um, S'mores is also an audio storybook sharing thing. <clears throat> Am I going to show you this one? Because it, it actually started in the UK. So if, when you look at these stories, a lot of them, they have the awesomest accents. So if you want to see like little tiny kids with cool British accents, um, this is the place to go. And again, you're not going to be able to hear it. So there's really nothing point clicking. But what this um, does, it has an iPhone app too, and it's going to the Android store. You can record yourself reading a story, and then you can share it out in the Smory's web space. Um, and see, she's reading. She's feeling grumpy, and she needed cheering up. Okay. 
Um, so again, it's just another place where you can share out those stories. It's very easy to upload. It gives some kids some confidence that they can read out loud and there'll be a little video of themselves. Um, and there are absolutely tons of these stories out there. Red Kid is a storehouse of um, creative tools for kids. I'm not going to click into it now, but it has tons of sign creators. It has a, a, a webmail for kids. It's like a safely monitored webmail. So if you have a little one that wants their own email address and you're not cool about giving them a Gmail address right now because they might get weird spam or something, um, you can use Red Kid to give them their own little email address. Um, it also has a lot of cool sign printing tools and, and art activities and things like that. Audio and music. Oh my gosh, Vokey on here again. Um, Vocaroo and AudioPal let you in, let you record audio and embed it in a website. So if you want to do your message from your director as an audio file this month instead of just typing a paragraph, they can record it and you can Im embed it onto your website. We talked about Vokey and VoiceThread. Um, Turbit. <laughs> Okay, um, lets you upload and again share audio easily, but this one lets you edit it a little bit better. I guess I don't have to click on it. Um, and again, it's all hosted on the web, um, and it lets you share out through a variety of social media. Um, the other two I talked about, Vokru and AudioPal, are links. So you can embed them, but you can't share them out. Turbit lets you share out. So it depends on what you're looking for. Hark is a storehouse of sound bites. So if you want a sound bite for a presentation, for a website, um, they have sports, they have movies, they have um, political gaffes and clips and things like that. Um, but it is an absolutely huge storehouse. And they are clips that are created so you can use them without violating copyright. Okay, so that's a big thing too. You can go in there and you can steal like 11 seconds of Harry Potter and that's all you get to use of Harry Potter, but you get those 11 seconds. So you, again, don't have to worry about copyright. And then Dragon Tape um, lets you create mixed tapes of um, any kind of media on the web. So if you've ever been out there on YouTube and you're frustrated because something you want to watch is broken into four clips, you can use Dragon Tape to string those clips together. Um, we actually use this in our athletic training department to string clips of actually like, um, like analyzing injuries and things like that. So if you have like, oh, somebody broke their ankle and you want to analyze it, you can pull those clips off, you can string them together into one video or one link and distribute that. Okay. So it's a very useful tool because YouTube doesn't let you manipulate their videos very much. Library-ish things. Who has Novelist? Who would like to have Novelist and can't afford it? Okay. Booklamp is like an open source version of Novelist. It's building itself up so it'll get better and better. And if you are one of those altruistic people that wants to go help it, you can go out there and, and put some book DNA in it. Um, but basically, it lets you search by things that you have read and what you might like. So like here, it's using Da Vinci Code and Game of Thrones. If you like medieval weapons and armor, right, you might like Game of Thrones. Um, surprise! If you like criminal investigation, you, you might like the girl who kicked the hornet's nest. Um, but there are lots of different aspects to this. Um, there's an ongoing blog. You can make an account. Um, it's kind of like a crossover of novelist and digital humanities. It like, looks through the text, it tries to find themes, but then it tries to give you read-alikes. Um, for those of us who don't have novelist, it's a very nice little novel-esque, novelist-esque tool. Book track, um, I mentioned because I think it's like the stupidest thing ever. Um, has anybody heard of this? Um, I just have to share it because it's so silly. Um, it's like what it, it's supposed to do is give you a soundtrack that goes along with your ebook. Right? So like it supposedly knows like the best music to go along with your ebook. And then it'll download it onto your device. Um, and then you can listen to the music with your ebook. Like, isn't that a weird concept? Right? Like I don't even understand, like, here's a Bible one. Here's a soundtrack for the New Testament. <laughs> What's up with that? Okay. But like, yeah, but look, look, it's in Forbes and it's like it's getting all this press. But I don't understand the point. Um, so if any of you guys like think this is great or have a use, um, let me know. But I just I have to share it because I just think it's the weirdest thing ever. But it's like a huge it's a company that's successful. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Um, Movellas and Fickly are places to share your own fiction. So if you're a short story writer and you want a community that out there that's all short story writers, um, you can check out Movellas and Fickly and they'll workshop for you and they'll help you get published and they'll do all that stuff. 
Genie um, is a genealogy tool. It helps you build family trees. Um, it basically looks like a mind mapping software. You can build a diagram, but then it has boxes so you can add your personal information. So you can actually build a virtual family tree and add your little genealogy bits in there and then have a link to send out to people. Or there's a printable version, totally free. Really, really neat for those genealogy people. Okay, Storify. Storify is integrating social media. Um, I'm an academic librarian. I have faculty that think social media is like the devil. Um, so we, like really, like the Twitter is a horrible thing. Um, it's just the, yeah. Okay, I'll stop there with that part of my speech. But what Storify lets you do, if it'll upload, maybe not, is it lets you pull information from all, all over the web, um, both news articles, tweets, Facebook posts, um, Instagram, all of that stuff, and it lets you integrate it into a story. So you can pick a topic, you can search the web, and you can pull all this stuff in, and then what you get with is basically a multimedia research paper. Okay? So it's not just focusing on our traditional sources, but it can. You, know, you can pull in those articles too, but if you want some commentary and things from social media sites, you can integrate those in. I think it's a, an absolutely fabulous place, especially if you have some social media doubters out there. Um, Small Demons is not Appopedia. Oh, my link is broken. Um, Small Demons is a storehouse of information about fictional characters. So if you want to know what, um, I don't know, Elizabeth Salander reads in her, in her books, you can go in and Small Demons will tell you all of the pop culture references that she makes or what she read. Um, and it does that with everybody. So like if you want to, I'm trying to think of another one, like Jack Torrance from The Shining, right? If you want to know everything pop culture that Jack Torrance did, what kind of whiskey he drank, what kind of medicine he took, um, that's all in Small Demons. But it's all cross-referenced, okay? So if you, or High Fidelity is a good example. Um, if you have High Fidelity and you want to know all the songs they talk about in High Fidelity, there's thousands of them, it links all of those visually, okay? I wish it would open because it's really, it's one of my favorite things I've found in like the last five years. Um, it is the best trivia thing ever, right? Yeah? For, your, for trivia people? Eh, it's not going to find it. Um, go and take a look at it. It's really, really cool. It also does geographic location. It does um, like products, so like McDonald's or Kleenex. It'll find those references. Like it's just an amazing storehouse. It's another one of those sites though too that is depending on us to help them get better. So if you have a favorite book and you know it in and out and you want to go add some of your knowledge to that base, please do it because it makes it better for everybody. It's another one of those super librarian things. And then share some sugar. Share some, share some sugar. I have a list. Um, <laughs> share, some sugar, share some sugar. I can't say it. Share some sugar. Um, it's like a library online. Um, this, it, this popped up in 2008. Um, and you can basically ask to borrow anything in your neighborhood. You can search by zip code, and you can say, I need a drill press, but I only need it for like two hours. I don't want to spend $1,000 on one. Does anybody have one I could borrow? You put your zip code in, and everybody that will loan you a drill press for two hours will pop up. Awesome. Like, can you get more awesome than that? Like, I don't want to put us out of business, um, but it's really cool. Okay, and you can see, like, there's, Sarah Schinsberger is like a modern-day warm and fuzzy grandma who always happens to have just the right item you need at just the right time. Um, and that's really what it is. It's really well developed in urban areas. Um, it's not quite so much in smaller rural areas, but it's getting there. And you can see, you can look by, I want a hammer, or you can look by your zip code, and you can find what's available. Okay, very cool. There's also like a baby stuff trading swap and shop on there. Lots of different stuff. Okay, um, searching and instruction. Quizlet makes you make online, lets you make online quizzes that are totally interactive. Um, and then it has built-in games. So you, if you want to make a quiz, but then you also want to make them like shoot the right answer. You know, we all played that when we were little. Um, you can make a vocabulary quiz, but then they have to shoot the right answer. So it's like game-based learning, totally free, totally web-based. You get a URL, you send it out to wherever you want to take the quiz. Visual Thesaurus and iPlorer are both visual search engines. iPlorer is my favorite one. I'm running out of time, so I need to hope this will open really quickly. Again, we talked about mind mapping earlier, and I'm, I'm a mind mapper, so visual search engines are really a, a boon for me. Um, you can see here, it gives you some examples. So like, I'll do French Revolution. You can type anything in, but we'll use one of the canned ones. 
and it will pop up a relational mind map search for you. Maybe. Do, 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 do. Visual thesaurus is basically the same thing, um, but it's a little more linear. So if you're a bubbly person, you'll like iPlore. If you want lines, you'll like visual thesaurus. This one does, um, it is does some animation, so it's a little bit more intensive. It works off Bing, not Google. I mean, you can see here, like it breaks it out by time, health, place, science, society, people. You can, all of these are links. It'll give you little shortcuts. Um, it's really, really neat. It's great for a person that comes in and says, I have to write a paper about the French Revolution and I don't know what to focus on. This will give you a nice breakdown of that. Boolify um, is a tool that was made by the same people that made Creza that actually lets you build searches using Boolean language. So if you're all about the Boolean language, it actually has little drag and drop things for ands and ors and nots and parentheses. Um, so you can teach people how to use Boolean language or if you just want to make yourself happy by using Boolean language as it dies out, um, you can use Boolify. And then Wolfram Alpha, are you guys familiar with Wolfram Alpha? Yes. Um, computational search engine, you can type in anything and it'll give you an answer, practically. Um, you can type your name in and it'll tell you how many people in the United States have your name, right? You can type your birthday in and it'll tell you how many people have your same birthday. Um, and it'll do math and some other stuff, but, you know, very cool. Um, oldies but goodies, these have been around for a little while longer. Um, Lucid chart is kind of like lovely chart, it lets you build diagrams and things web-based. What do you suggest um, is another search engine that will try to help you find a result. So if you're in Google and you got 3,000 results back and you can't quite figure out what you need, um, what do you suggest will actually try to narrow down for you? It'll give you some examples. It's a very nice tool for confused folks. YouTube Time Machine, anybody use this one? That's one I gotta click into. YouTube Time Machine takes all of the videos on YouTube and organizes them chronologically. Fabulous. I know I see smiles. Fabulous. Um, just think of the things we can do with this, right? Um, it goes all the way back to like 1878 because there's some still images and things that have been uploaded. And um, it's, it's, it is really video intensive. But you can look for things like video games, television, right? You can link out. You can slide your year. So if like I want to go to 1964, I click on it. It'll give me commercials. It'll give me movie trailers. It'll give me Music, it'll give me anything that's on YouTube by the year, okay? Um, they're just, the possibilities are endless, right, with YouTube Time Machine. Such a cool idea. Cranberry are flashcards, web-based flashcards. So if you have kids that come in and they want to make flashcards, um, they can do that. There are a bunch of them that are pre-made as well. So like Spanish language was the one I was looking at this morning. You can open those up. It also integrates into smartphones. So if you want to make cards online, but then you want to practice in the back of the car while you're driving, or, or while you're not driving, but while your mother is driving, um, you can do your flashcards on a phone or a tablet. Very cool. GovTrack and Open Congress um, are two sites that allow you to track basically just what they say. Government voting, money, um, who's there to vote and who's not there to vote, how bills are doing. So if you have a senator or if you have a bill that you want to watch, you can set up an RSS feed and it will send you updates to that. Okay, if you have somebody that you're watching really closely, like the Secretary of State in the state of Missouri, who is cut, gutting our libraries right now, um, we can watch everything he does using Open Congress and GovTrack. Mm -hmm. Down for everyone. Has anybody used this? Yay, I got a couple of claps. This is like my favorite thing. Is whatever down for everyone or just me? Okay, so if you go to a website and it doesn't work, you can type your website in there and it will tell you if it's down for everyone or just you. So that way you know if it's your network, or if it's the internet that's broken. Okay. It's really nice when they just bookmark because sometimes you run into that, right? Okay, and then Dropbox. Everybody knows about Dropbox. Online storage, free for so many megs, integrates across platforms. Awesome. Okay, Twitter and social media privately lets you email private messages to your Twitter friends in an untrackable way. So if you want to make a conversation and you don't want Twitter to know about it and put it in the Twitter search feed, you can use privately, and you can add up to eight people at a time. Post Post is an overlay for a Twitter search, so it actually lets you use Boolean search terms and digs a little deeper into the coding of the site to let you get better results back than just using the regular Twitter search. Um, Visify gives you a infographic of yourself. Ah, oh, I can't 
to show you. Um, basically, it takes all of the stuff you do out there on the internet and it makes an infographic of you. So it shows you like how many friends you have, it shows you what things you talk about the most, it gives you a really, really nice breakdown of what, of what you've mentioned. Um, like I went in and looked at it and I had talked about ice cream way more than I had expected. Okay, seriously, like it breaks it down. It's really neat. So go and plug your name in there and look at your visit by. Okay. Um, and then Trends Map is a GIS overlay for Twitter. So if you want to know what the kids are talking about in your geographic location, um, you can go to, I'm not going to open it because it takes a long time, but it, it overlays whatever location you are and it shows you what's trending in that particular area. Okay, so if you want to look at just your area rather than the entire world, Trends Map will tell you what's there. Just for fun and totally weird, I've got like two minutes left, so I have to go really fast. iVoodoo lets you make voodoo dolls, um, and you can share them. So if you have a really bad day at work and you want to share a voodoo doll with your staff, um, you can send a, a virtual voodoo doll out and everybody can stab it with pins or burn it or do whatever they want. Um, bag check is one of my favorite things about social media, which is the fact that we overshare to the point where we're a little bit crazy, right? Um, bag check lets you make your own list or share pictures of all the stuff that you have. Um, it started off as like a packing thing, but like now you can see like here's baby stuff or dads must have or things I don't miss about babies or um, you know kids things to say or baby gear, blah, blah, blah. This is all babies. There's a golf one, right? But that's all it is. It's like people took pictures of their stuff and like put them on the internet for no real reason, right? You know, but I mean, if you need a list and you say, what do I need for my baby for the first three months? You can go here and take a look. Did I just lose my thingy? Okay. Um, Run and Pee is actually just an app. Run and Pee, yes. Um, Run and Pee tells you the best time to get up and pee during a movie. <laughs> Seriously. Like someone has so, so if you go into like Iron Man 3, which is two hours and 40 minutes long, and you want to, I don't want to pee there when Pepper Potts gets killed, so I need to know when I'm going to get up. Not that she gets killed, I don't know, but. Like, it'll actually give you a little buzz in your pocket to tell you, okay, now's the best time to go. How useful is that, right? Um, I love it. Okay, and then places I pooped. This is another one. Like, we're now on the scatological humor part of my presentation. Um, but places I pooped actually let you log all of the GIS locations that you have gone to the bathroom. So, like, it also is a map that lets you, a map that lets you tag where you've been, but it just does it in sort of a tongue-in-cheek way. Um, and then know your meme and meme generator. We all know memes are all over the place, but if you want to know why something was created or when, um, know your meme is actually like an encyclopedia for memes. Um, so it's very nice. And then meme generator um, is a meme generator. So if you want to make your own insanity wolf or you want to make your own like triumphant baby, um, you can go on to meme generator and it'll let you make your own. Mind Bloom is a mindfulness app um, that will remind you to be nice to people. So if you have a, oh, I just lost my internet. Um, so if you have a problem being nice to people or if you want to be reminded, it'll send you a little alert on your phone or on your computer that say, remember to breathe today, right? And but sometimes we need that, so it's a little bit fun. And then Bakealicious um, is my favorite thing ever, and this is how we're going to end. Bakealicious allows you to put bacon on any web page. <laughs> so basically you put your link in there and it just puts a big old piece of bacon on top of the content of the web page. <laughs> the end. Okay. So do I have any time for questions? Like a minute? Two minutes. Does anybody have a question? Yes. Yes, places I pooped. Now, does that actually let you link like there, there is another one that lets you do that that's called Ms. P, M-I-Z-P-E-E. -E. Like, I don't just do this, I don't look up bathroom apps for a living. <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, it's not going to open up right now. Um, but that actually does. It's like helping you find a clean public toilet, right? So that's another Ms. P, M-I-Z-P-E-E. -E -E. Helps you find a clean public toilet near where you are. Anything else? Okay, so I know I talk. Yes, way in the back. Um, I was just asking questions. Uh, what's that? The I4? Uh huh. What, how well do you actually search for visual things? Like frequently, I have people come into the library and say something like, oh, I saw this sign, or I, I saw this A 
It doesn't. Okay. You use Google goggles or Google. No, it doesn't. It's it's a traditional web search. It just does it in a visual way, so it doesn't really look for images. Sorry. Does anybody know anything really good that works for images? Anybody want to share? No, I'm getting lots of head shakes. Like there's an, an uh, iPhone and Android app that actually lets you take pictures and does a Google search that works fairly well. Um, but if you're on a weird color, a lot of times it'll focus on the color rather than the content of the picture. Um, and this is like I pride myself on being that person that somebody says, I need something that tells me where there's a clean bathroom. And I will say, oh, I read about that. So if you guys have weird ones, you can come up and try to stump me. Because um, I, do, I do this for a living. It's weird. Okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for your attention. I hope you've got something that you can use to take back to your library. I still have a lot of things. Okay. I love the bacon. That was awesome. <clears throat> we have a 15-minute break, and then at 1030 is our 30 tips in 30 minutes. A couple things that you could do, you could go to the art gallery, which has an art exhibit called Consumed. And the other thing is Meredith is down in the edge. The 3D printer is running. It's making something as we speak. So if you want to see it working, now is a good time to go. And all of the handouts links will be on the website. So I think everything that, if you took lots of notes, that's great. But you didn't really have to because we'll post everything. Yeah. OK, this is uh, Krista Burns again here back at the Nebraska Library Commission. Hold on just a second. I am pulling back. There we go. So that, so I don't know about anybody else, that was awesome. I had a great time listening to Cynthia speak there. Um, for those of you that came in um, late and I didn't really get to do a full intro to this session, today's um, Encompass Live was a live broadcast of the um, opening keynote at the Northeast Kansas Library Systems Technology and Innovation Day being held at the Topeka and Shawnee County Public Library. Uh, that was Cynthia Dudenhofer, who was doing her Web Tools to Make You Look Cool session. Um, it was recorded, so we have all of that recorded. Um, I have been working, as you can see from my tabs up here, on adding all of the different things she mentioned into the delicious account that we use here at the Library Commission for all of our presentations. Um, for all of our sessions for Encompass Live. So um, when the recording for this session is up, I'll add that link as well so you'll be able to get to all those things that she mentioned. Um, as you can see, I'm still working on some of them. She was rattling them off very quickly. Uh, so I tried to keep up, and I think I've got them all in there. Um, so that will wrap it up for this morning's Encompass Live. I do have one question on the line. Someone did ask about if any other parts of their conference will be recorded. Um, we're not doing them through our show here, of course. We just do Encompass Live in the mornings here, and we just do this one session. Um, but Michael Sowers, who is our technology innovation librarian, um, this is his monthly Tech Talk session of episode of Encompass Live. He is actually there at this conference in, um, in Kansas, so he is um, keeping... He is down there right now. Um, he does have uh, our camera on hand, our video camera, and he is planning on videotaping for them um, as much of the other sessions as he can. So at some point, there will be recordings of the rest of the sessions that they have on their Technology and Innovation Day. So um, we'll see how those come out, and you may be able to see some of the other ones that they are doing um, later on today at some point when he gets those done. Um, and I know that they are working on doing some recordings of, of their own as well, too. So um, that will be uh, coming up. Uh, so that, as I said, will wrap it up for this morning's special edition of Encompass Live. Um, I hope you will join us next week when our topic is, what does a successful internship look like? Um, Catherine Brockmeyer, who is here from the Library Commission, she handles our internship and scholarship program. She's going to be talking about um, how to do an internship, how to... Um, create one and get someone to come into your library or institution to um, do uh, this kind of thing for you, to be an intern for you at your library. So I hope you'll sign up for that um, 
for our session next week, the first week in um, May. Um, also, if you are a Nebraska library and interested in doing other educational, any sort of other um, continuing education or looking for other educational opportunities, we do have our Nebraska Learns 2.0 program where we offer a, a uh, thing to learn, a web page, website, a tool that can help you do your job, and we offer a book that you can read every month that we suggest. Um, this is this month's book, You Are Not a Gadget. And if I scroll down a bit here, our thing for this month is social social news sites, reading things like Reddit and Dig. Um, if you complete these during the month, um, and you still have a few days this month to do it, you can earn continuing education credits to the Nebraska for um, your uh, library uh, accreditation here in Nebraska. Um, if you are at, in another state, you can also do these things. Um, contact your continuing education people in your states and see if they would be willing to give you credit for participating in this program and doing any of these things that we have on here if you want to. Um, the last thing to mention to you is Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, you can um, uh, follow us there, like our page on Facebook, and you'll be notified whenever we have new shows coming up, when the recordings are available already, um, anything that's of interest and related to our sessions will be on here as well, so follow us on Facebook if that is something that you use. Other than that, thank you very much for attending this morning, and hopefully we'll see you on our future episodes. Thanks. Bye-bye.